Have you ever watched a movie, a commercial, or even a game trailer and thought, how did they make that look so good? Those perfectly lit scenes, smooth camera movement, and stunning composition can seem like magic, or like something only a massive studio with huge crews and expensive gear could pull off. But here's the cool part. With Unreal Engine, you can create those same breathtaking shots yourself. In this tutorial, I will show you how a few simple but powerful steps can instantly make your scene look like they belong onto the big screen. If you ever wanted to create cinematic shots in Unreal Engine the right way, from initial setup to final render, this tutorial is for you. Using this car commercial as our guide, I will walk you through the entire workflow, and by the end, you will be able to recreate the shots yourself. Whether you are a complete beginner or a seasoned veteran, you will find valuable techniques to level up your work. So in this tutorial, we will go step by step. How to set up the project for cinematic purposes, what is the proper shot structure, and what are the essential camera properties that we have to pay attention. On top of all this, we are going to look at how to animate in Unreal using Sequencer, how to set up the post process, and finally how to render all this out with the movie render queue. So let's just dive in. Alright, before we can create something pretty, we have to make sure that our project is set up the correct way. As we are striving for a very specific, cinematic, ultra-realistic, high-end look, we have to make sure that the ray tracing is enabled under the project. So let's just set up that first. Go into the Edit, Project Settings, and type here Direct. The default RHI has to be set to DirectX 12, which basically tells Unreal that we have to use the good stuff. As for the next part, we have to go down into the Engine and Rendering section, and scroll down until you find the global illumination. It has to be set to Lumen, the reflection method as well, the Ray Lightning mode to surface cache, the software radius mode to detail tracing, and the shadow map method to be virtual shadow maps. If you happen to have a video card that supports hardware ray tracing, such as any NVIDIA RTX card, I would definitely recommend to turn on the support hardware ray tracing, the ray traced translucent reflections, ray traced shadows, and the use hardware ray tracing when available under the lumen. It's going to really elevate your shots because it's going to give you much better reflections and shadows in your shots. Now that we made sure that our project is looking fancy, let's talk about plugins. And believe me, Andre has a bunch of them. Think about them as add-ons. Some of them can be tools that elevate your workflow, and some can unlock features that are not available out of the box. Due to the sheer number of them, in the following sections, I'm going to walk you through what are the most essential plugins that are required for the cinematic workflow. So let's just dive in. Go into the Edit and Plugin section. And we are going to search for the movie render queue. It is the go to tool in Unreal to create high end renders, but I'm going to talk more, more about that later. Also, enable Niagara and Marcus support and movie render queue additional render passes. The next plugin, what we are going to look for, is going to be the Open Color IO. Open Color IO um, is a color management system that makes sure that the colors look consistent. All across the different parts of the project. It also makes sure that what we see in Unreal is going to look exactly the same in any other softwares such as After Effects, Nuke, or Blender. Once you flip all those switches and enable those plugins, Unreal will restart and compile the shaders for quite some time. So make sure to go for a walk or grab a coffee. But after that, um, when everything is all set, we are going to show you how to uh, set up an OCI configuration. So right click anywhere in the content browser, scroll down and here and open up the open color IO configuration. Name it however you want. And by double clicking, you are able to open it up. Here we have two transform options. It is the desired color spaces and the desired display views. Just add new elements for each of them and select for the desired color spaces, the utility and linear rec 709 as RGB. For the desired displays, go down and the sRGB display and select ACES. Without going into really deep into the color science, uh, what you have to know that Unreal is working by default the Rec 709. It's really good for general work, but for cinematic and VFX world, 
the standard is ACES, which is uh, standing for Acomedic Color uh, Encoding System. Uh, it basically makes sure that the whole um, productions and frame is going to look right no matter what from start to the end. But we are not finished yet uh, because we can't really preview uh, or we, we doesn't even see what does it look like in effect. So in order to enable it, we have to go into the late OCI display and we have to select the newly created OCI configuration file. When it is done, we have to go down and select for the source, the linear rec 709, and for the target is the sRGB ACES. And finally, we have to enable it in the display. And you can see how does it take into effect. So if you want our renders to look as close as possible to the cinematic experience, you have to make sure that you are using the correct color space, which is ACES. By determining the source and the target color spaces, Unreal is able to interpret the footage and correctly preview it in the, in the editor itself. Another often overlooked part is the project scalability, which basically lets you control the quality level of various features, such as the view distances, lighting and shadow quality, and many more. To access this one, above the viewports, click on this icon and search for view scalability. Here we're going to be presented with a bunch of presets. These can be either individually or grouply uh, modified. But as we are looking for the best quality, we have to choose the cinematic one. It basically cranks up everything to the maximum. And you are going to be able to see the final result as you will do the same thing in the final renders. All right, so this is the end for the first section of the tutorial. We covered a lot of groundwork, but they are really essential to achieve the cinematic workflow. We learned how to enable ray tracing for the realistic look, what are the essential plugins such as Movie Render, Q, and OCI configuration? And finally, we take a look at what is project scalability and how can we utilize it. So in the following session, I'm going to show you how to create the proper shot structure, which is going to lay down the foundation for our work.